right, for this video, we're continuing with our TurboTax example for John Taxpayer. And now we are going to look at how to enter the information to claim the child tax credit. Okay, so for those of you who have seen the previous videos for, for John Taxpayer, we have to modify the fact pattern a bit for this one, right? So in all the previous videos as part of this playlist, John was just a single filing taxpayer. He had no dependents, right? And so that's how we've been preparing the return so far. But what if we change the facts a little bit and John did have a son and could claim him as a dependent? How does that impact his ability to claim not only the child tax credit, but also the earned income tax credit? Okay, so let's say that uh, John had a son born in January 2021 and uh, John and the son's mother, they don't live together, they're not married, and John just has sole custody of his son, okay? Now the reason why that information is relevant because obviously if you have uh, shared custody arrangements between the parents, then it makes things a little more tricky as to who can claim the child as a dependent. Uh, and then ultimately who gets the child tax credit too, right? So you can't, if you have separately filing taxpayers, so obviously John and the mother as non-married would file several returns, only one person can claim the child every year, right? So sometimes they alternate, uh, but in this case, uh, the mother is not going to be able to claim the, the child, uh, and so John is just gonna claim the son. So how does this change everything? Well. By claiming his son as a dependent, it's going to change John's return in a couple of areas, right? So one big one is his filing status, right? So far, John has been a single filing taxpayer. Uh, and so by being able to claim a dependent, it changes his filing status to head of household. And that's nice for John because it gives him a greater standard deduction. Um, it increases it from the 12,950 to 19,400 so it's it's lowering his taxable income which will lower his ultimate tax liability uh, the other thing that it'll change is the retirement savings credit so in the previous tutorials we looked at form 8880 to claim a credit for uh, a certain amount of contributions to his traditional ira and by switching to head of household it actually increases his credit we'll see that it doubles uh, and that's because the head of household filing status gives you a greater uh, factor to multiply by the, uh, the amount of the contribution. All right, so let's cover some basics on the CTC uh, and then we'll get into the return. So for 2022, the child tax credit is $2,000 per child under age 17, right? So the, the child has to be 16 years old or younger. If they turn 17 on the last day of the tax year, you don't get this, okay? so. Uh, it can be a bit frustrating, but that's just the way the rules work. Now, in order to qualify uh, the taxpayer and child, they have to meet a, a number of different tests, right? The relationship tests, age, uh, support, right? So the child can't provide more than half of their own support. Residence, child's got to live with you. Uh, you as a taxpayer have to claim them as a dependent. And then citizenship. So the child has to be a U.S. citizen or U.S. resident alien. Um, in order to be able to claim this. There are certain rules for uh, adopted children, uh, but in this case, what we'll see is that John's son is a U.S. citizen, so he's gonna meet that test. Now, the child tax credit is a non-refundable credit. So what does that mean? It means that when you claim this $2,000, it is a dollar-for-dollar -dollar reduction in your tax. If your tax is reduced to zero, you do not get a refund uh, for the excess unless you qualify for the additional child tax credit. So the ACTC is basically the refundable portion of the child tax credit. So if you get the ACTC, you can claim up to $1,500 of the $2,000 amount as a refundable portion. And so in this example, what we'll see is that John meets this criteria. So he gets the claim, the CTC, and he gets a refundable portion uh, which basically, you know, we reduce his tax to almost zero and then he gets a, a refund basically from the IRS for, for a, a piece, which is the ACTC. Now, if you claim the additional child tax credit, under the PATH Act, your refund is delayed until 
basically end of February, right? They say mid-February is kind of the starting point, but in practice, it always seems to be end of February is when, you know, the earliest they start to release these refunds. And so, and that's done as a kind of a security measure. What they found was that in the past, there was too much fraud with uh, tax credits. And so now they intentionally delay the returns being processed and refunds issued, uh, you know, to give the IRS a little more time to kind of verify the data. The other thing with the ACTC, so this is the refundable piece, you have to have a minimum of $2,500 of earned income to claim the refundable portion. So if, you, if you're filing a tax return to try to claim the, the, the tax credits thinking you're getting a refund, you know, it's not going to work unless you have some earned income. All right, so if you, don't, if you don't have a job or if you, don't have, if you only have investment income, you're not going to be able to get this. All right, so let's go over to the tax return and we'll start entering some of this information and see how it changes John's uh, taxes. So we're going to add a dependent. Right now you add each dependent separately. So if you have multiple kids, uh, enter all the information and answer all the questions for one and then go back and add another dependent. And so the way this is going to work is we're going to add all the dependents. Well, we're just going to have one. So we're going to add a dependent first and then we're going to look to see whether we qualify for the child tax credit and then the ACTC and how it changes the return. Now, the nice thing is TurboTax will do virtually all this for us automatically. So, um, you know, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, but um, nevertheless, we still have to go through the, the motion here. So uh, let's say, you yeah, know, the child's name, you know, child name obviously is not a real person. Um, and the child was born January 15, 2021 and he is a U.S. citizen or legal resident. Now, um, remember, in order to claim a dependent, doesn't necessarily have to be a U.S. citizen or legal resident, but in order to get the child tax credit, they do. So it's very important you answer this appropriately. In our case, yes, the child is a U.S. citizen. It is the son of John, and then none of these elements applied here, right? So the child was not disabled, the child did not pass away, in 2022. Uh, child is also not adopted, nor is the child a foster child. Okay, so we're gonna answer no there. Go ahead and click through. Did the child live with you for the whole year, right? So we're, we're digging into the, you know, the elements of what's a qualifying child, right? So in our case, yes, the, the child met that residence test. It, it did live with us enough days during the year. And we do live in the United States. So John is a US resident. The reason why they're asking us this is, uh, again, the residence tests um, for child tax credit purposes. Obviously, if you're a U.S. citizen and you live abroad, you know, your child is still your dependent, but because you don't live in the U.S., it changes, you know, what kind of credits you can qualify. Did the child pay for more than half of their own living expenses and other support? Well, no, right? So it, it's, this is a toddler, so the child's certainly not paying for more than half of their own stuff. Um, their support is being provided by the parent. All right, go ahead and continue. Do you have a written or verbal agreement with the child's other parent about who can claim? In our case, no, but this is important to consider because if you are alternating who can claim the child as a dependent and then ultimately the CTC, um, you very often need a, a written or verbal agreement. And um, it's also going to be important for the 8812. So we'll, we'll see that later. But that is the form that's used to release the dependency exemption or, or the dependency claim. So custodial parents can release the claim to the non-custodial parents if it's generally better for them and their taxes. So where did the child spend most nights in 2022? John's home. Who is planning to claim the child on their taxes this year? I am, right? So John is going to be doing it. Okay, so, um, oh, and the 80, 80, 8332, so that is the, the claim release. So if John um, if, if John's son is living with him, so he's the custodial parent, but he is going to release the dependency claim to the mother, then John can, John can sign an 8332 and give it to the mother, and then the mother can claim the child on, the, on her taxes. But in this case, John's not doing that. He's going to be claiming his um, son as he's the custodial parent. All right. Uh, let's check if any other relatives will claim the child. So did a relative of the child other than you live in your home for more than half of the year and support the child financially? So no, this doesn't apply to this. But 
uh, this often occurs when you have grandparents. So if the grandparents and their child and then ultimately the grandchild, if everybody's living under one roof, then you could have a situation like this where the grandparents are basically supporting their child and the grandchild at the same time. And so that's where you have the situation that might arise, but doesn't apply to John here. Okay, so checking to see if qualifies as a dependent. So good news, right? So uh, John's son uh, does qualify as his dependent. So go ahead and uh, enter, obviously not a real security number here. And click through. Did you pay more than half the cost to keep up your home? So now they're asking us questions to change our filing status. So this is a head of household question. Um, yes, I pay more than half the cost uh, to keep the home. And so, uh, yeah, there it is. So now it's, it's switched our filing status from single to head of household because we have a dependent, uh, not married, and we do support our own home here. So it tells us there very nicely. You qualify because you're not married as of the end of the year and you have a dependent. You could choose to file a single, but head of household saves you more on taxes. Yeah, so definitely we're keeping head of household because again, it is um, it's gonna give us a standard deduction that's much greater and that's what we want. All right, so we got the dependent in there. Now we can already see that it's adjusted our tax return a bit here. So it's made some adjustments for the head of household filing status change, uh, and it's very likely already added kind of the child tax credits in there. So if we look at deductions and credits, yeah, so it's done a couple things for us. It's done uh, child and other dependent care credit. So there's our $2,000 child tax credit. It has given us the earned income credit. We'll talk about that in the next video. Um, it's adjusted our retirement savings credit. So if I go, let's go through the child tax credit screen because I want to go through the questions and just talk about some of the questions a bit. Okay, so do you have any of these uncommon situations? Uh, don't apply to most, but we still have to ask. So I got a notice saying the 8862 is required for the child and other tax dependents. All right, so what is that 8862? That is a form that has to be submitted with the return. If you had a credit like the CTC or the earned income credit that was disallowed uh, in a prior period. So you have to provide more information to support that you can actually claim these credits. So in our case, John hasn't gotten anything like that for uh, current year or prior year, so he doesn't have to do that. Uh, they're asking us here, I don't want to claim the ACTC. So remember, the ACTC is the refundable portion of the child tax credit. Uh, if we're getting it, we want to keep it, right? I mean, I, I suppose there's no reason why we would waive it uh, unless it was disallowed in a prior year and you can't claim it. That's the other thing. If you have tried to claim the child tax credit in a prior year and the IRS determined that you did so basically fraudulently, they might bar you from being able to claim it in future periods. So if you have uh, been if you have been prevented from claiming the ACTC because the IRS gave you a notice, then yeah, you would have to check here and let them know that you're not claiming any of this because you, you're not allowed to. And it normally runs for a term of years. Uh, in our case, no, none of this applies. Go ahead and continue. Tell us about your residency. Were you a bona fide resident in Puerto Rico? No. Um, okay, so good news. Oh, yeah, okay, so pretty <laughs> straightforward. Not too many questions there. So, all right, let's go ahead and hit done, and then I'm, let's bring up the, the tax return itself. So we'll look at uh, the, uh, the 8812 and then how it kind of modified the return overall. So as the previous videos we've done, we're going into the tax tools print center. We're going to print or preview the return because uh, we want to see ultimately how these numbers you know, flow to the filing. So page one here has changed. We've added the child as a dependent now. Um, head of household is now the new filing status. So when we look at page two, we'll see how these numbers have been modified a bit. So the child tax credit in this case is being reported really in two spots. We see up here on line 19, child tax credit or credit for other dependents, 8812. We can see $813. And then we see the 
additional child tax credit, the refundable portion down here, line 28. So if we, if we do some simple math here, you'll see that this is the 2,000 bucks. So 813 and then 1187 is our $2,000 child tax credit, but it is split between just the portion that is a dollar for dollar reduction in tax and then the refundable portion, which is the ACTC, all right? Now, that breakout, we could see that further on the actual 8812. So we, if we scroll down, should be towards the bottom. 8812, there's the earned income worksheet. Okay, so here's our 8812 credits for qualifying children and other dependents. And so the form starts uh, with, you know, at the top line item, all right, the amount of our income coming through from page one. And then we can see here, as it flows down through the return, the pieces that are uh, broken down into the um, refundable and non-refundable portions per the credit limit worksheet. So I don't think it's going to be, let's see. I think if we print the other version with the worksheets, you can see specifically how they arrived at these numbers. Now, again, the nice thing is, uh, TurboTax does all this for you automatically. So if you want to see the actual uh, worksheets, if you go back to the print section, let me close out of here so I'll show you what I mean. So here where it's prompting us, you know, what do you want to um, uh, print or download? If you were to select include the government and TurboTax worksheets, which is optional, within the TurboTax worksheets, they'll have those credit limit worksheets where they show you what portion is the, you know, the 813 versus the 1187 piece. So um, if you really want to get into the weeds on uh, how those numbers are calculated, then by all means, have a look at those worksheets. But again, the nice thing about TurboTax is, you know, they help do all this for you automatically. So you don't um, have to actually thumb through the worksheets and do the comp computations yourself. All right, so that covers it for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. Uh, obviously, any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thanks.